Hey everybody, it's Babette with Haggerty Dog Training. And have you ever noticed that when you go to the vet, your dog maybe shakes, is petrified, pees all over the place? The vet comes in and they just want to run for the hills. I call that white coat syndrome. And today I'm going to teach you how to teach your dog to really love going to the vet's office. Even if you have an adult dog and it's no longer a puppy, don't worry. If you instill these skills that I'm going to show you today, you will have progress and your dog will learn to love going to the vet. So it's really important to have the correct state of mind. If you yourself are nervous about taking your dog to the vet, that is going to transcend down that leash and your dog is going to be nervous. So before you leave to go to the vet, you're gonna say, come on Rocky, we're going to the vet. It's gonna be so much fun. Give him lots of love, lots of love. You can give him a cookie and some toys and you put him safely in the car. Rocky's small enough, I just put him in the crate. Stay. He's got his little toys in there. All right, we're going to the vet. Get excited. And that is how you want to approach putting your dog in the car to go to the vet. Now once you get to the vet, you're gonna hop out, you're gonna say, Rocky, we're at the vet. So this is so exciting. Yay, we're gonna go see the doctor. We're gonna go see the doctor. And you can have your treats. I know, oh my goodness, this is so exciting. We're gonna go see the doctor. Now this is something you actually wanna do before the real vet visit. You wanna take your dog to the vet several times before they actually have to go to the vet, have their microchip, have their spay or neuter surgery, or any vaccinations. You are going to do this several times, at least five to seven times, preferably on a daily basis for a good week before their very first vet visit, so that they know coming to the vet's office is so much fun. Come on, Rocky, let's go see the vet. Come on, Rocky, we're going to the vet. Yay, we're going to the vet. We're going to the vet. Yay. Good boy. So I'll just give him a little treat before we go inside. I do want to teach him to sit and stay at the door before we come in and go out. I'm not too worried about that today. treats on the floor so he starts smelling the treats and knows that all these good smells in here are awesome smells. Come on Rocky. Come on good boy. Yay Rocky. Yay. The head is so much So when you get to the vet's office, remember you want to do this every day, you're just going to ask the nice ladies at the front desk to just pet your dog, maybe give your dog some treats so that he knows that or she knows that whenever he comes to the vet's office, all he's going to do is get flirted with by all the nice receptions. <laughs> he's so sweet. Oh my goodness. Hi. Okay. Oh, yes. So you really want to get your dog used to being up on the table. If you have a larger dog, you want to get them used to being up on a table that elevates as well. So I'm just bringing Rocky in here. I'm telling him he's a good boy. I'm giving him a couple of treats. Good boy. I want to get him used to being handled as much as possible. I'm gonna tickle his belly and tell him stand, stand. Good boy, good boy. I'm gonna massage his ears. Oh, your ears need to be cleaned, young man. I wanna pick his ears. I wanna check his teeth. I'm gonna do everything the vet's going to do with him. I'm going to also just touch his tail a little bit, kind of give it a little tug, not like a hard tug, but just put a little pressure on it so it gets used to having that tail lifted and moved around for when they stick the thermometer in his little tushy to take his temperature. And I'm gonna massage every single toe he has. And you'll notice that as I'm massaging every single toe he has, I'm giving him treats. So he's so preoccupied with the treats, he's not really paying attention to the fact that I'm touching his toes. Good boy, good boy. Good boy, what a good boy he is, you're so good. And I'm just gonna rub him everywhere, massage him everywhere, so he knows that this is just a wonderful thing. Good boy. Now they also have a scale here. So it's great if you can teach your dog to get up on the scale and to stay still on the scale. So I'm gonna put a couple of treats on here. Stand, stay, stand, stay, stand, stay. And you'll notice I'm just giving him treats. Stand, stay. And I'm tickling his belly at the same time. Stand, stay. Good boy, Rocky. Good boy. Come on. Yay. Good boy, Rocky. 
Now, right now, he's just so preoccupied with these treats that he's even really not noticing that I'm pulling on his tail a little bit, massaging his feet. I'm gonna actually take his skin from behind his neck and tug on it a little bit because that's what they have to do with some of the certain vaccines is they'll pull on the scruff of their neck. They lift it up to put the vaccine in. Good boy. Good boy. Again, I'm doing his ears. I'm just going to do a once over once again. And I'm gonna tell him, come on, get up on the scale. Get up on the scale, come on. Get up on the scale. Good boy. Good boy, Stan. Stay, and I want him to stay still. We really need for them to learn to stay still so that the vet can get an accurate weight. Stay, stay, stay. Now, of course, it's easier if your dog already has the knowledge of the stay command. Good boy, stay. Good boy. Okay, Rocky. Come on. Good job. Good job. Well done. Now, if your dog is older and is nervous at the vet, there are two other things you want to keep in mind. One, your vet may recommend giving your dog something like a tramadol or some other medication before their vet visit. That will calm your dog down. A lot of people also have success with CBD oil, not the treats, but the oil itself. But again, you need to consult your veterinarian about that before giving that to your dog. Another thing to keep in mind is a lot of vets will take your dog in the back for its examination to administer any medication or shots. Now, before you get nervous about that, you have to understand that dogs will often act much differently with mom and dad than they will with the doctor. So your dog is not being tormented in the back. The vet just knows that your dog is probably going to behave better if they're in the back and mom and dad are not around. A lot of times owners sit there and if the dog is very nervous, they're consoling and saying, oh, it's okay, baby, it's okay, baby. And it's kind of like, who's more nervous, the owners or the dog? And the owners actually instill that fear and that nervousness into the dog. So it does make the vet's job easier a lot of times if they just bring the dog into the back. I also recommend that when your dog is being examined or your cat or whatever your pet is, just be silent, let the vet do their job. You don't wanna distract them and you kind of just let them handle the dog the way they need to handle the dog. They are pros at this, they handle all different kinds of dogs every single day. So it's best that we just let them do what they need to do. All right, so when you arrive to the vet's office, you want to put your dog either on the floor or keep them in a sit, or you know, if you have a little dog, they can sit up here on the bench. But again, you just wanna make this fun. You can bring their toys, you can bring their treats, and you just sit here for a few minutes so that your dog gets used to waiting in the waiting room for the vet. Now again, this is something you wanna do every day for a week before your actual vet office visit where your dog is actually going to be examined by the vet. This way, they get used to coming to the vet. This is kind of a cool place. They're hanging out, they're chilling out, they're playing with their toy, they're getting a treat, they're getting lots of love, people are seeing how cute your dog is, and just hang out and relax. Have a cup of coffee, have a cup of tea, check your email, whatever you wanna do, just let your dog hang out, chill out, and relax. And tell them, what a good dog. Isn't the vet's office fun? Yeah, you're a good boy. Yes, you are. And that's all you have to do in the waiting room, is make it fun for them. So I hope you really enjoyed learning how to combat white coat syndrome for your dog. Remember, start right away, visit your vet frequently, make it lots of fun, and try not to create anxiety in the dog. So until next time, happy training, and thanks for loving your dog.